Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, welcome and welcome back to our regular community. <laughs> Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin trading at 47859, down 0.8%. Ethereum 3183 down 0.07%. My goal is to assist you to be more of a financial blessing and create real wealth for yourself and those you love. I've hidden knowledge gems throughout this video. Unless you watch to the end, you'll miss them. See how many you can find. I'd like to talk to you today about commitment. This extends our analysis from episode 214. Ken Blanchard said it really well. When you're committed to something, you accept no excuses, only results. Our community is about the results that come with real wealth. Real wealth is about confidence, kindness, authenticity, inner and outer peace. That's what we are committed to as a community. Abraham Lincoln, 16th US president said, Commitment is what transforms a promise into reality. Rule 711, excellence always. This is a cornerstone of our philosophy as a community. Turning to KS own analysis, the four stages that all investors and traders progress through to become consistently profitable and attain real wealth. When people first get started in crypto, either trading or investing, they enter zone one, the fear zone. It takes a lot of courage to get into action. That places people into the second zone, the blame zone. It takes a lot of courage and independence and commitment to move past blame and seek zone three, which is the patience and rule zone for the people that truly want absolute meaning in life. The commitment required to enter the meaning zone, zone four, is really important. The meaning zone is all about inner and outer peace, authenticity, meaning, fulfillment, all those beautiful things that make life truly worth living. It's undeniable the commitment fuels excellence. Excellence is what we're all about, as well as commitment. Rule 174, the T-Cube method, trend, timing, and trigger. We're going to look at timing now. Using the KS method, the first thing we do is look at the Bitcoin news headlines as though we've just entered the market and know very little about crypto at all. We're just trying to see if the news headlines are positive or negative. Top five energy efficient cryptocurrencies to invest in. Ooh, invest. It must be good. <gasps> They're energy efficient. I have to get me one of those. Bitcoin whales join small fish. Ooh, it's all about the sea. In a buying, ooh, in buying Bitcoin as price holds above 47,000. <gasps> this is really good. Oh, it's so aquatic. Solana, the sandbox, perpetual protocol, Carva, notches, fresh something. It's got to be good. If it's fresh, it's got to be good. Like fresh fish. Oh, no. Bitcoin whales join small fish. Hang on a second. Haven't I seen this before? Mmm, it's like deja vu. Bitnob integrates lightning network for faster transactions. Oh, good on you, Bitnob. That must be Bitnob there. Nigerian Central Bank reveals Central Bank Digital Currency Guidelines, CBDC. Hang on a second. Wasn't Nigeria banning Bitcoin? Oh, China banning Bitcoin, Nigeria banning Bitcoin, CBDCs, Digital One. Oh, this is very coincidental. Blockchain is necessary and everybody knows it. Huawei exec. Hmm, very cool. We agree. Billionaire Paulson, Paulson, who shorted subprime, calls crypto a worthless bubble. Oh, no, I was so excited before. Now it's a bubble. Oh, OK, Bitcoin, its followers want to twist preconceived ideas. Really? What are they doing? For two days, the community of maximalist Bitcoins, maximalist Bitcoins, there are Bitcoins that are maximalist. Okay. And 
Aren't they supposed to be Bitcoiners? <laughs> okay, anyway. Defend their favorite crypto. Oh, people should share. Bitcoin whales <laughs> join little fish. <gasps> this is incredible. So many similar news stories. Well, we've got to look into whales and fish. Definitely. Let's check it out. Now, what does all this mean? Fish and shrimps and crabs and octopuses and whales and sharks and dolphins? Hmm. I did this little bit of analysis to just help you out. A shrimp holds less than one Bitcoin. So all of these shrimps exist here. That's about 5.26% of the coins. Now, what do crabs do? They hold between one and 10 Bitcoins. That's about 9%. We've got a cute little octopus here and a little fish as well. Or is the octopus a little fish? Is that a big fish or a little fish? So hard to tell these days. 22.69% of all the coins. Let's have a look. What do we have here? Isn't he cute? That's a dolphin. And what's this guy? It's a really nice shark. They hold combined 20.87%. And look at this little fella. Wow, he's a whale, but that's his big brother, a humpback whale. Look at these humpback whales. They whales hold 42.17% of all the coins out there in circulation there's about 18,798,865 coins that have been distributed circulating supply so let's think about it the bitcoin whales are joining the small fish to buy bitcoin if we assume an octopus is a little fish and a fish is just a fish we can see that about 85.73% of circulating supply is made up in those categories. That's a lot of buying. Oh, that's pretty cool. I'd just like to thank our amazing community for reaching 10,000. Whoa, woohoo, it's high five time. Let's party, everyone. That's wonderful news. Thanks, everyone, so much for your really kind comments. It's beautiful. I've had one of those days today where everything has been really, really busy. I've meant to get back to people, but unfortunately I've missed quite a few. I just want to let you know, I'm so appreciative of your kind comments. The next thing we look at is investment substitutability. The S&P 500, the proxy for stocks, is up 29% over the past 12 months. Gold is down 8%. Bitcoin is up 309%. Looking at the Bitcoin stablecoin supply ratio, SSR oscillator, we can see Bitcoin is attracting a flow of stablecoins into Bitcoin. And this is increasing. That's always a really positive sign. When we see things like that, it means the price is going up. We can see that open interest has come down a little bit, but it's still quite high. Let's have a look now at the crypto main market. Looking at crypto total market cap, the entire market is currently $2.029 trillion. We can see recently that we got above this level of resistance. We hit another level of resistance around 2.11 trillion dollars we've come down when the entire market overcomes this overhead resistance it will rally what's really happening right now is bitcoin is seeking to attempt to take out the 50,000 k level it's a key psychological level for the market there's currently 11,478 cryptos in the market. 24 hour liquidations were 163.4 million, occurring across 47,118 traders. 86% of liquidations over the past 12 hours were long. Looking at Binance derivatives, 24 hour trading volume was 54.3 billion. 24 hour open interest 11.4 billion 
Bitcoin is currently under negative 1% change in the contract price in the past 24 hours. Ethereum, negative 0.3. The positives in the market, FTM at 36%, OGN 14%, EGLD 11%, and Waves at 10.4%. I thought I would just include the greatest losses and start tracking those as well. LRC, negative 23%, NIA, negative 9%, ADAM, negative 7%, and CHR, negative 7%. Turning to Bitcoin's technical analysis, Bitcoin is currently trading at 47,684. It has support below at 47,206, 46,566, 45,830, and 45,268. We've got a lot of psychological support at the $45,000 mark as well. We saw recently Bitcoin overcame this resistance and then it rallied up. It overcame this resistance and then it sought to get through the 50,000, dropped back, sought to get up, but dropped back again. It's fallen below this support line. It's now under resistance. What is actually happening here is that there is a lot of sell pressure above. Really what we're seeing is that $50,000 market mark is being really well defended by sellers currently. After being in the markets for more than three decades, I just want to let you know there's a bit of a trick that institutional players do. They tend to push price down to get people to capitulate, only to drive it up to crazy levels. I've seen this play out literally thousands and thousands of times in different stocks, different cryptos, different commodities. It happens all the time. I just wanted to let you know. That's why we always seek to lower our average buy price, to take, I guess, advantage of those institutional moves. Another good thing to keep in mind, price is always moving in a wave. It's always going up and down and up and down. It's just the nature of price. You never really miss out on anything, especially in crypto. Turning to Ethereum's technical analysis, Ethereum is currently trading at 31, 60 and 74. We can see Ethereum is holding up a lot more strongly than what is Bitcoin holding up. We notice as well that Ethereum is above support where we see Bitcoin is below resistance at the moment. Also, Ethereum has a very clearly defined channel of resistance playing through here. This is quite a tight channel. That gives us a really fast signal. And it's coming up to a really sort of key point where it could break out either way. But we never really worry too much about price. It's always going up and down. It's just the nature of things. Turning to fear and greed. In the market currently, the greed fair and greed index is greed at the level of 73. It was 72 yesterday, an extreme greed of 78 the day before that. We can notice a couple of things here which are quite important. In terms of the 200 day moving average, price is consolidating quite substantially above the 200 day moving average. That is a quite positive sign for traders that use moving averages. Bitcoin is currently 26.32% away from its previous all-time high. Looking at the perpetuals, the futures, they're currently short. Turning to the options in Bitcoin, put call ratio is 0.5. Total open interest has increased slightly to 53,963.4. The max pain level, where the majority of options expire worthless, is currently 40,000. I would urge people inside our community not to touch options or futures unless you are already consistently profitable. If you are a professional, that's absolutely fine. You know what you're doing. If you don't understand options and futures, 
basically you could lose everything it's really important to just buy at spot and not leverage the quick gains are not quick in these markets you have to be really clever about what you do and the most intelligent thing that you can do is just buy at spot it's probably good to note that around 75 percent of options expire worthless that basically means that out of every 75 positions well out of every 100 positions 75 lose their money completely we're keeping an eye on USDT, which is Tether. We don't detect any problems with either the perpetuals or the traditional futures. They're around the same as they were yesterday. One interesting thing that I would just like to point out, we've had a crossover in relative strength in here from the RSI indicator. The RSI indicator, I don't mind using. I use very, very few indicators because it's all about price. In truth, price gives you an unbiased approach to looking at things. Other indicators can cloud. What I've done here is that I've just overload, uh, overlaid common indicators or overloaded them onto this particular diagram just to give you a bit of a perspective if you use those things. I personally don't. I just like support and resistance lines, but a lot of people find it advantageous. Whatever you choose to do, you're an artist. You can express yourself in any way, shape or form that you like. Use whatever gives you an edge. Turning to Ethereum, we can see Ethereum is currently 31.7% below its previous all-time high. On the flippening data, Google search interest decreased from 30 to 26%. The node count actually increased 9%. Market cap remained the same. 59% active addresses, 59% trading volume, a decrease of 2%. All the others remained the same. Since EIP 1559 was introduced, 432 million in Ethereum has been burned. We can see the RSI on the daily. What is it showing us? It's showing us that the relative strength is improving in Ethereum. It may not look like that from the price action, but that's actually what is happening. Looking now at the futures and the options, the reason that we cover futures and options is that you'll hear a lot about it. The more familiar you are with it, the more it won't catch you off guard and people will not be able to use it to bamboozle you. The short futures, or perpetual futures on Ethereum are short currently. <laughs> short futures, that's cute. I can imagine futures wearing shorts. Sorry about that, I divert. The options, put call ratio is currently 0.56, the same as yesterday. Total open interest has increased a little bit to 326,358. Max pain is the same at 1920. Turning now to the top 7% movement movers over 24 hours and seven days. The top seven, Bitcoin, Ethereum, ADA, Binance Coin, Tether, XRP, and Doge. The greatest gainers over the past 24 hours, Rev, Phantom, Perp, Flow, Waves, Elron, and Solana. The greatest gainers over the past seven days, Rev, Sand, Solana, Tezos, Arweave, Celo, and Phantom. The greatest percent losses over the past 25, <laughs> 24 hours are with Nia, Amp, Adam, Audio, XTC, and Luna. The greatest losses over the past seven days, XTC, Amp, Tel, Rune, Sushi, Dash, and Synthetics. Looking at open interest, we see that open interest in Bitcoin has actually come up 2.3%, XRP up 3.6%, Solana up 11.4%, Doge up 1.8%, 
Filecoin up 2.7, Axie Infinity up 4.0%. There is a direct correlation between changes in open interest, positive or negative, and changes in price. What you're seeing here is a percent change. That means that Bitcoin went from a more negative to a more positive change. It doesn't necessarily mean that anything with a plus in front of it is going to create a positive price. But when you have percent changes, it means upward pressure on prices. Likewise, negative changes in open interest mean exactly the opposite. Looking across the Binance top cryptos, these are the top 33 cryptos. The top one over the past 14 days has been AVAX coming up 120%, followed by XTZ up 50.81%, then Luna up 49.26%, Sol up 48%, Ada up 31%, Adam 25% up, Axie Infinity up 10%, BNB up 9.57%, then followed by Cake, ICP, XMR, and Bitcoin. Let's have a look at the top eight. This is all about Rule 109, Enhanced Pattern Recognition. It's a really, really valuable skill. We're going to look at the top eight across the weekly time frame, the three day and the four hour. You can see the weekly is all of this data, the three day zooms in and the four hour is just the recent price action. This gives us a lot of context over what different things are doing. We can see with Bitcoin, Bitcoin is holding support. It's above support. It's on another level of support up and that is basically still holding. If we look at Ethereum, Ethereum is doing well. It's above a lot of positive air above that support line. Cardano is doing extremely well. It has a very strong level of support and then a sharper level of support up. If we see Binance coin, Binance coin and Ethereum have similar patterns. Part of the pattern recognition perspective, Cardano does as well. Those three quite similar. If we look at XRP, XRP came down, touched this support line and then bounced. It's just retracing, as is the market. Doge really strongly rallied up and then came down and broke that support. It's just coming towards this support line and it's just on the resistance side of that right now. We look at DOT. DOT has fairly substantial support running through. It's also got a stronger support line that has just been turned to resistance. If we look at Sol, Sol has really partied and it's continuing to party hard. Looking now at the three day for the top eight, we can see on the three day, Bitcoin is above support. On the three day, Ethereum is below resistance. On the three day, ADA is above this secondary support. Binance coin above primary support. We look at XRP. XRP is still above the first level of support. We look at Doge. Doge is coming back to that first level of support. DOT is under resistance and Sol is partying really hard. As we now zoom in to the four hour, we're seeing very tight support and resistance lines here. We can see Bitcoin is just below resistance at the moment, as is Ethereum. We look at Cardano, that is also below resistance. Binance coin is below resistance, coming back to approach this level of support at around 445. We can see XRP is coming down, but it's still above this particular support line. It's not looking too bad. Doge has been quite weak as we've seen on the higher timeframes. It's 
basically under this resistance and is on the other side of this support but looking quite weak at the moment having a look at dot dot has two lines of primary support coming up here it's just below resistance currently having a look at soul soul has a very strong channel of support it took off through there it was so strong it didn't even test it and it's romped up there it's partying really hard Let's have a look at some community requests. Please note, I don't endorse any of these things. Do your own research is really important. Rule 444, a really important rule. Ignore tips and advice and especially marketing. Okay, let's get into it. This is on the four hour. We can see near has been doing quite well. It's just currently under resistance, but it's got a lot of support below it. Having a look at Cartesi, it's pretty much at the support line, just a little bit below it, but it, Cartesi moves up and down quite a lot. Ethereum Classic is above this very tight resistance line. Let's see how that goes. That could play out really well. Yesterday I was talking about AMP being really spiky. You can really take advantage of these spikes if you're trading by setting limits down really, really low, hoping to catch a falling knife like this. Between there and there is actually, we should measure that. That's kind of interesting. So for example, pretend you didn't catch the, the complete move, but this, if you basically bought not at the very tip, but just somewhat up a little bit, that was a 90.12% improvement in price. If you went a little bit higher, it's around 106.41%. If you're trading the volatility of AMP, it's absolutely full of volatility. It's quite interesting from that perspective. Nano is just a little bit below support but not so much that we would call it resistance if we look at egld egld is above support and has just passed through this resistance turned it to support as well veracity is doing quite nicely it's on the other side of that resistance it's seeking to consolidate bitcoin cash is just below resistance at the moment. Looking at Luna, Luna is doing very well. This is a strong chart pattern for your pattern recognition. It is above this line of resistance now turned to support. Have a look at Matic. Matic is showing, unfortunately, a lot of weakness here. It's sliding down its support line. Come on, Matic, put it together. Telcoin is unfortunately also below resistance. It's sliding down, but it's got a little bit more strength than Matic has at the moment. You see this tight line here, you compare it to Matic. Matic's price is literally sliding down that support. Telcoin's is a little bit stronger. It's not sliding down, it's sliding out to the right. Let's have a look at Harmony 1. One is still under this resistance and it's under resistance, double under resistance there. Having a look at Multivac, Multivac has good downward support here, this support level. It's also being supported by the secondary support line. LRC is doing quite well. It's also quite spiky. Just be aware of those spikes. When you have a lot of spikes inside a chart, the ability to buy quite low often presents itself. Buying these sharp spikes, and this is not investment advice, this is just the way of the world inside crypto. If you see spiky charts, you can slurp up some really good bargains. If that's what you're interested in doing, always do your research. Loopring is very well supported at the moment. We can see quite a bit of strength in that chart. 
XTC, unfortunately XTC is still under this resistance. It's got some negative air that's developing in there. Not so good. And it has violated a couple of resistance levels as well. For your pattern recognition, look at XTC as opposed to Luna. You can see Luna's chart is quite different to XTC's chart. Get used to these patterns. They really, really help you. Icon. What's happening with Icon at the moment? It uh, has a really good support line. Price is just below it, but that's not really much of a deal because we could actually clone this support line down to here and Icon, ICX, would be at support right now. That's really important for you to be able to do just with your eye. It's a skill that's well worth developing. I've just drawn in hopefully what you saw with your eye anyway. You see this cloned support line here, cloned down to here. You see prices around the bottom of that at the moment, neither here nor there realistically. You probably drew a resistance line in with your eye. That's what it would look like if you actually drew it in. Currently, ICX is below that resistance. What it really needs to do is to get up to around, say, the 145 mark, and then it will have repaired that technical damage. Well done on making it to the end. Just a little bonus for you. ETFs that own Bitcoin. This is from buybitcoinworldwide.com slash treasuries. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust owns 654,600 Bitcoin. Wow, go Grayscale. That's quite a lot. The way that they've managed their trust is quite incredible. It's a very, very clever organization. That's a lot of Bitcoin. It could also be interesting to note that Block.1 or Block1 owns 140,000 Bitcoins. As more and more countries and governments start to adopt Bitcoin as digital gold, you can imagine the very large number of Bitcoin that they will buy. And a fun fact, Michael Saylor from MicroStrategy his company owns 105,085 Bitcoin. It's really impressive stuff. Just a modest $5 billion worth of Bitcoin. Here's another gem for you. You may look through this list and say, my goodness, Ken, they, they just own all the Bitcoin in the world. These naughty public companies and private companies and ETFs. Hey, guess what? Tell you a secret. Look at this. All of these holdings only represent around a little over 7% of the current circulating supply, which is around 18.8 .8 million. It's really amazing, isn't it? We're so early in all of this. As more and more public companies, private companies, governments start to own Bitcoin countries, wow they are going to take a, an enormous slice of the pie. You are totally in the right industry at the right time. Your timing is perfect. If you want to have some fun, please leave something with the word early in it, just to say how early you are. That's really nice. I love to see the people who look all the way through the video it's just heartwarming and touching to see you take so much commitment and put it into making yourself more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love. It's just beautiful. I hope you found the content useful. Please consider sharing this video if you think it will help others. Thank you to our moderators and admins for keeping our community safe from scammers. Please say hi and let me know where you're viewing from and if you have any questions. If you would like updates on price movements in the crypto market, please subscribe to YouTube and you can join us on Facebook and Discord. They're both free groups. And you can follow me on Twitter as well and direct message me anytime you like. I've left details in the description of this video. Please remember, crypto is volatile. 
Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.